I mean, you have to figure that at some point this year, there will be a new Speaker of the House. Who knows? By the time you watch this episode, Republicans might have gotten their act together and elected one. But regardless of however the vote ends, it will be an important thing to remember just how revealing this process has been about one of the two major political parties in America. Because the fact is, there is no easier vote in the House than a vote for Speaker. That's why a vote for Speaker hasn't gone beyond a first ballot in 100 years. But Kevin McCarthy tried and failed again and again and again and again and again and again. Because 20 of his fellow Republicans, led by Congressman Matt Gates, decided to derail, or at least delay, his campaign to be elected as Speaker. And because of the Republicans' very slim majority, only five House members needed to stand in the way. Even Donald Trump couldn't seem to get a single one of them in line. On Wednesday, the former president took to Truth Social to urge those members to stop the fight and throw their support behind Kevin McCarthy. In a statement to Fox News, Gates had this to say. Sad. This changes neither my view of McCarthy, nor Trump, nor my vote. And here's how another one of the Trumpiest MAGA Republicans, Lauren Boebert, responded to the man that she calls her favorite president. Let's stop with the campaign smears and tactics to get people to turn against us. Even having my favorite president call us and tell us we need to knock this off. I think it actually needs to be reversed. The president needs to tell Kevin McCarthy that, sir, you do not have the votes and it's time to withdraw. And with that, I yield. Thank you. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. So, what has the first week of 2023 taught us about the current state of the Republican Party? One, if hardline Republicans stick together, they have a whole lot of power. Two, Donald Trump doesn't have nearly the kind of pull that he used to have in the Republican conference. And three, things could get really scary really fast when this Congress needs to come together to do things like, I don't know, fund the government and raise the debt ceiling the issues that have real world consequences and issues that are much more difficult than picking a speaker. Joining me now to take a deep dive into all of this is a longtime Republican strategist and MSNBC political analyst, Matthew Dowd. Matt, it's always so good to have you here. Happy New Year to you. First question out of the gate. I want to get your take on this debacle for House Republicans. What is concerning you the most right now about what we've witnessed so far this week? Well, Happy New Year to you, Katie. Um, I mean, it's hard to put the number on the concerning things about this. Uh, in, in my view, I've said this is both unprecedented and in many ways predictable of this. I think the biggest worry is they can't even get their act together, the Republicans in the House, to select a speaker. How do we expect them to act in the performance of their job in government for the next two years in the course of this on all of the much more important things than picking a speaker? What are they going to do? It's a sure sign of the dysfunction of this branch of government. And I'll say one other thing is, is the only area in the elections that the voters of America put the Republicans in charge of were the House of Representatives. Democrats won the Senate. Democrats won the presidency. Democrats won all the key races. And think about that. The only area of dysfunction today is the area the Republicans have in charge of. Yeah. And, you know, Matt, to your point, though, we talk about the work and the important work that needs to be done. And definitely, let's not underestimate the power that happens when you do have a House majority. But I think people need to know and, and to be reminded, you can't get anything done until you're actually sworn into office. So what is that, I guess, portend? What does that say about the fact that we may go onto week two without actually having a House speaker, without actually having members of the House sworn into office? Well, it, it portends many bad things. First of all, you can't get any intelligence briefings. If anything happens in the world or anything happens in the United States of America, there's a briefing process of people both in the Senate and the House. So the only people that could be get briefed today are people in the Senate. So you don't even have that capacity in the case of some national security event in this. And so I, I think what it, 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 again, what it really, really says is they can't pick their leaders. We can't get the House in order in the course of this. And while unprecedented, I think it's eminently predictable of a group of 
of leaders on the Republican side whose interest has never been about governing. They've never had an interest over the last five or six years about governing. And so why would we be surprised if they don't even want to pick their leaders and install the House? Because they've had no interest in governing in this. It's always been it's always been performance art or you know, owning the libs or whatever it happens to be. And so this, to me, is just another step in the process of people elected who have no interest in governing. I want to play for you some of Congresswoman Lauren Boebert's interview with Sean Hannity on Fox. It quickly went off the rails. Let's take a quick listen. Sean, I understand the frustration, I promise you. But, I'm not um, frustrated. He does you didn't not answer have the my votes. question. And we are hearing... We I'm are not, hearing I'm from many frustrated. people who are still voting with Kevin McCarthy, who You're are not very my supportive question. of what we're doing, and they're cheering us on. So there are more for us than are against us, and they are waiting for Kevin to cave. Okay. Um, you know, the American people are certainly frustrated by— I'm frustrated by you not answering a direct question. Yeah, Matt, he sure does sound frustrated to me. I mean, looking at this exchange, though, all kidding aside, does it really say to you there are no more adults left in the room in the GOP conference? Nobody had actually reason with somebody like Lauren Boebert and Matt Gates. Well, first of all, I think it's it's somewhat amusing, ironic that that Sean Hannity and Fox News who create who are Dr. Frankenstein and created this monster and now the monster is destroying the village and they somehow want to hold the monster accountable that they helped create in the process of this. They brought us this House of Representatives. They brought us to the situation we're in today. I think this is just an underlining of the fact that there is no institutional Republican Party anymore. The last one left is probably Mitch McConnell, and he is losing his, I think, grip over time. He still has it, but over time. But the inability of a party structure, the Republicans are now, to have any guardrails in the system to keep the crazies out from getting nominated, which they haven't done, as you know, over the last two or three elections. We've seen crazies nominated, and some win and many lose, as we saw in this last election. But they have no ability to put together an institutional framework to have guardrails in their system to prevent things like the last three days from happening. That's what they created. And now we are reaping the, 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 the seeding of this process in the Republican Party where no one is in charge that has a rational common sense bone in their body anymore. And they created it. Sounds like a rotten crop to me, Matt, but let's kind of <laughs> shift focus to the other side of the aisle, right? What do you make of House Democrats right now? We've seen their big unity show behind Hakeem Jeffries. Does it seem like they're content to literally grab the popcorn, watch the chaos, the factionalized fighting, you know, kind of the meltdown happening on the other side of the aisle? Should they be looking more closely at what's happening on the other side? There's been a big debate the last few days about whether or not there should be some negotiations, maybe some compromise with Kevin McCarthy for him to get some votes. Well, not not being able to predict what's going to happen over the course of today, tomorrow, and this. My guess is is the Democrats in the House are going to stick with this at least if the Republicans continue to not elect the Speaker through the weekend and until Monday. At some point, they and they know this, but at some point, the amusement becomes a much bigger concern about the functionality of the just the levers of government in this. And at some point, there are six or seven, there are exist six or seven or eight moderate Republicans who don't necessarily like Kevin McCarthy, uh, but don't do not want to cede power to the crazy 20 that are out there in the course of this. At that point, in my view, that's the best avenue. If, if the Republicans can't pick a speaker that gets the support they need is for the Democrats to go to the six, seven or eight moderate Republicans and say, Let's work this out for a way that benefits the American people. So we kind of also saw quite of a, I'd call it maybe a split screen moment this week as that mean girl style food fight was continuing in the House. President Biden touting his infrastructure bill success in the state of Kentucky. I want to play something he had to say about Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell. Take a listen. Leader McConnell, I don't agree on everything. In fact, we disagree on a lot of things. But here's what matters. He's a man of his word. When he gives you his word, you can take it to the bank, you can count on it, and he's willing to find common ground to get things done for the country. So thank you, Mitch. Thank you. I mean, Matt, we, 
we both know, Mitch McConnell, Joe Biden, they go way, way back before President Biden's tenure in the Oval Office. But what kind of messaging is going on here with the president of the United States choosing to stand there and say, basically, to House Republicans, you have a minority leader in Mitch McConnell that I'm actually willing to say something pleasant about? Well, I think the broad the broad uh, panorama of what he did yesterday was great. I mean, it's, it basically highlights, here's what works, and you guys are watching what doesn't work in the course of this. My dispute with President Biden, and he's a man of grace and always wants to reach out, is that statement you played is fundamentally not really true, because <laughs> Mitch McConnell hasn't always kept his word in the course of this. He, he has honored things on infrastructure and honored things on keeping the government running. He didn't keep his word on Merrick Garland. He didn't keep his word on Amy Coney Barrett. He hasn't kept his word on a number of things that have been very consequential, especially related to the Supreme Court. But broadly, what the president's trying to do is say, here's what adults do, and now you're watching the children who should be in time out, here's what they do, and pointing at the Republicans in the United States House. And it's a great picture, contrasting picture to show the American public. Before I have to let you go, I have to ask, let's look down the road, November 2024. Will Americans remember the insanity that's happening right now in the House. Will they have that long-term memory and say, we can't let Republicans have control of anything because they're not capable of being able to even do a procedural vote? Well, here's what I say. They may, they, they're likely to forget this week or the next week and not being able to pick a House member, but they will be reminded of the insanity on a weekly basis. This is just the beginning of what you're gonna see in the House. Because as I said, if you can't even pick your speaker in the course of this, how are you gonna make the, the votes necessary to, to provide the, to raise the debt ceiling, to function government? And so they may forget this moment, but there's gonna be a continual amount of moments where their insanity is reminded for the next two years. Matthew Dowd, my friend, thank you for launching 2023 with me. I appreciate you being here and sharing your insight and your analysis. Thank you, Katie, always.